On Tuesday last week, the UK's Academy of Science, the Royal Society, played host to the 16th Scientists Meet the Media Party, organised by the Daily Telegraph and Novartis UK. Beneath portraits and busts of the Society's founding fathers, today's leading scientists and science journalists set about their appointed task of improving relations with each other. Finding ourselves in such distinguished and cerebral company, we asked some of the guests for their predictions about which scientific hot topics will hit the headlines in 2007. But I hope we find a bit more about the brain. That's what I'd like to understand. I think if we could understand consciousness, that, wouldn't that be wonderful? And as I understand it, um, people understand how the eye works pretty well, and they understand how stuff is processed down one level from the eye, so you can edge detectors, movement detectors, and stuff like that. But once you get below that level, how the whole thing is put together is utterly mysterious still. So I just wish people would hurry up and find out. I think, I th I think I'm, I'm so worried still that we're not engaging young people with science or with scientific fact or things that are based on science. And I don't think the newspapers, should I say the Daily Telegraph excluded? No, I can't really. I don't think the media is helping. Um, the, the whole event of, of global warming uh, is a snowball and is, is, is stampeding forward. And the, the facts behind it are getting more and more spurious. I went to CERN about a month ago and looked at the Large Hadron Collider they're putting together. And at the end of this year, they're going to be shooting protons at one another at 99.9999% of the speed of light. And they are certain they're going to make the Higgs particle. They think they're going to make dark matter. They're amazingly excited. Well, you know, I think it's still we're in the golden age of cancer research. But the big challenge is are taking the information that we've all learned about what goes wrong when cells become malignant and really translating that into something that will help the patients. Well, I think in 2007 we could potentially see a convergence of many technologies to spur on a new era of innovation as we see bioinformatics, IT and computer technology combining with traditional modes of science we could see significant new strides forward in the treatment of many, many diseases. I'm going to predict that one of our orbiting spacecraft, maybe Mars Express from the European Space Agency, is actually going to catch water in the act of flowing down perhaps the wall of one of the craters. I think the field that really excites me is the sort of whole new picture we have of people not as just simple human beings but as super organisms and the fact that in our guts we've got more bacterial cells far more than in the rest of our bodies and there's a growing realization this could influence things like obesity so obese people might have a set of microorganisms that are better extracting energy from food than the sort of microorganisms in slim people like you so I could have a different set of gut bugs from you science is going to impact on politics in more and more ways. We have to make decisions on nuclear power, for instance. We have to decide what to allow with regard to stem cell research. And these are decisions where the public has to understand the basic science in order to be involved in the debate. If the world's political leaders and those responsible with their hands on the money bags were convinced that what the Earth requires is a source of energy which is pollution-free, I cannot but believe that we can do it. It may take money, and the more money, the less time, but the better off the world will be.